Thanks for watching Littleton Common. And now here is Barbara McRae and Mark Crory. Welcome to the May edition. I'm excited to be here. And uh, before we start, um, it's spring. The animals are out. In fact, we have a little horse right here in the studio. Aren't you a little horse? <laughs> a little horse. A little horse, yes. Barbara's voice uh, went out last month when she was yelling at her husband, apparently. <laughs> But um, she's going to try to get through it today, but we'll, uh, we'll see how you, how you feel. You're much, doing much better. You sound much better. I do. Yeah. I do. Good. I don't know how I'll sound as we do this, but I'll try. Okay. Great. Show must go on. That's right. You're, you're a star. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Did you see the eclipse? I did. I did. I watched it here in Littleton. I didn't travel up to the oh. totality zones. Oh, in retrospect, I probably should have because I talked to some people who did, and they said it was incredible. Oh. Now here, as you know, because you saw it from Littleton, right? It just kind of got cloudy a little yeah. bit, weird colors and stuff, but it wasn't uh, that different than a cloudy day, really. Really. But we had the glasses, and we were here at Town Hall watching, and a um, big crowd here, and... It was cool to see the moon start to go over the, uh, the sun. Did you see the, um, did you have glasses? I didn't see it in person. Oh, okay. You watched it, it on the- It was like after my bedtime or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, what time do you go to bed? Yeah, no. Six o'clock, no. <laughs> oh, well, um, um, a friend of mine went up to uh, New Hampshire, way up in New Hampshire, where it was in the path of totality. And uh, it happened, I think, around 3.30 or so in the afternoon. And um, afterwards, they left. They got home back to southern New Hampshire at 4.30 in the morning. Ooh. That's how bad the traffic was. Wow. Trying to come back. Just bumper to bumper all the way up 93. But they have a memory. They have a memory, yeah, for sure. And like I said... I wouldn't have looked forward to that traffic, but I'm glad that I, you know, yeah. uh, next time I'll go <laughs> in okay. 2077 when it comes oh, our yeah. way again. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I'll even go then. Okay. <laughs> or we'll, I'll we'll, be there. We'll, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, I see Barbara. <laughs> I uh, hope. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, April was a busy month for the senior luncheons, too. Um, Littleton High School honored the senior citizens with with a special luncheon, and that was on April 8th. And then the Littleton Electric Light and Water Department also welcomed the seniors with a luncheon on April 13th, so that's yeah. cool. And I wanna thank both of them for caring about our seniors. For sure. Uh, there's a special day on April 9th for our seniors when the ground was broken for the new senior center building, even though it was broken a little earlier. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they're beginning the work now for this uh, long-awaited project, and uh, there were many speeches heard and uh, committees that put their shovels into the dirt. It was a great event. And if you're interested, you can watch on um, our YouTube channel. You can see a live streaming um, <coughs> camera that's pointed towards the construction site. So if you ever want to check out the progress, you can log on to that and look at it. Uh, it's 24-7. So. Right, because cable's always there. We were there at the, uh, yeah, that's right. We're always there. We're, always there, we're like a doing bad, the job. Like a bad penny. We just show up, <laughs> right? Or, no, it's a good penny. Oh, okay. It's a good penny. All right. You know, I'm looking forward to that completed building. You know, April 19th was Patriot's Day, and the ceremony is held at Liberty Square in memory of the Revolutionary War and men who fought in it. Thank you to the Historical Society. You might be interested to know that the Historical Society's block, and I'm able to tell this year, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and for the town fair in December, will be a drawing of the Liberty Square Monument. Hmm. I was counting the historic blocks and realized they have been sold at the town's Christmas fair for 30 years. Wow. Where does it go? No kidding, I don't know. Uh, so glad our Littleton folks are enjoying the town's historic buildings in this small way. 
Town meeting is May 7th and our Littleton community television team will be there making sure we all can participate by watching from home or sitting at the meeting. Yes, and of course, if you watch from home, you're not really participating, right. but at least you can see it if you can't make it out. But this year is gonna be uh, different because they're going to try electronic voting. And when each person comes in through the door, when you normally check in, they'll give you a uh, little remote. Mm. And on the remote is the but two buttons on it uh, for <laughs> yes and no. They're mm. color coded, red and green. And they're gonna be voting on all the issues this year. So hopefully that, that'll speed up the process. Um, you just need to know that the voting is uh, anonymous. So even though they check you off that you've got a clicker uh, and on the back of your clicker there is a number, but oh it's not recorded next to your name or anything, so nobody knows how you vote. Hmm. So it's still very uh, anonymous in that sense. So that'll be uh, exciting, and um, we're looking forward to that, and we're hoping that it will uh, go well. I am going to use my bragging rights as a grandmother today. My son John's daughter, Taylor, wanted to be a jet pilot since she was very young, and ta-da! <laughs> She is now a first lieutenant in the Marines and has piloted a jet by herself in March. Wow. She has her instrument training and now will do a night flight and then formation flying. Needless to say, she is in heaven <laughs> and on her way to getting the best of her dreams. Wow. Taylor's husband, Austin, is getting out of the Marines soon and will be a civilian while Taylor continues with her marine career. Wow, that's awesome, that's great. Well, we Littletonians are blessed to have such a wonderful library with great people who work there. And one of them is director Sam Alvarez. So what's happening at the library in May, Sam? Thanks, Mark. And here's a sampling of what's coming up at the Ruben Hoare Library. The Friends of the Library book sale will take place on May 3rd, 4th, and 5th in the Sturch Room of the library. Be sure to check out some lightly used books, audiobooks and DVDs and Blu-rays, and help support the friends of the library. Introduction to book beekeeping will take place on Saturday, May 11th at 1 p.m. This class serves as an introduction to beekeeping to those individuals who are interested in becoming beekeepers, or it could just be a class for those people who are generally interested in these fascinating insects. Presented by John Headley, member of the Worcester County Beekeepers Association. On Saturday, May 18th at 2 p.m., Ryan Kelly will be back with his Wire Tree art class. Please join us for this fun arts and crafts class for adults as Ryan teaches us how to make wire trees. Frances Nold, author of She Looked to the Sky, will be here on Tuesday, May 21st to discuss her book about her mother who was a pilot during World War II. Adult board game night takes place on Thursday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. We have lots of fun board games to play or feel free to bring your own and share with the group. This program is open to adults only. Some regular group meetings every month at the library include the Monday Morning Writing Club every morning, every Monday at 6 a.m. This is a small group of writers who meet in the murder room to write together and share ideas and critique each other's work. This program is open to all adults. The third Wednesday's book club meeting this month on May 15th at 7. This is a fun book club where we meet to discuss a new book every month. Please visit the library calendar to learn about this month's book. This month we have some scheduling changes. So the staff may attend town meeting. The library will close at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, May 7th. If the town meeting goes an extra night, we will also close at 5 p.m. the following day. On Tuesday, May 14th, the library will have a delayed opening at 1 p.m. for a staff professional development day. And on Monday, May 27th, we'll be closed for Memorial Day. Be sure to check the library website at www.littletonlibrary.org for more information on upcoming events and programming. Thank you. Littleton Country Gardeners are extra busy the month of April and May. Arbor Day was a special day when the gardeners gave our third graders a small native white dogwood tree to plant in their yards. This has been done for over 30 years and many trees have grown along with the children. Mm. Next, the gardeners will be digging and replanting flowers into new pots for the May plant sale on the Common. This is a great fundraiser and club members working together. 
Join us on Saturday, May 11th, and buy some special plants for your garden. Make Littleton bloom. Hmm. Well, I was thinking about the Senior Follies recently, and just thinking about the Senior Follies brings so many wonderful memories. All the people in it and the laughs we all had doing it. And some of the things I can't believe Alan McRae and I were coerced into doing for the show. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Some of our cast have gone on to starring roles in the sky, mm. but we will always remember them by watching the Follies on screen. July 7th, the Friends of the COA will be holding a fundraiser for the new Senior Center on Shattuck Street, and they'll be showing the Follies on the big screen at the high school auditorium. If you are ready to laugh with and at our senior citizens in these shows, Join us in July for the first two plays, the 2014 and 2015 will be shown on that date. And I think we're all ready for a laugh during these times and, and here's where you're going to find it. And I remember the time spent rehearsing with the 30 people finding costumes at Savers and, and the Salvation Army and dumpster diving and making props and remembering all our lines. How do we do this four times and want to do it four times? Speaking of four times, the next two plays will be shown at the auditorium on September 15th. And uh, that's from two to five, also at the high school. So don't miss all four plays. You'll be glad you came. Look for flyers soon. <clears throat> you know, Littleton has many hidden treasures. We have five lakes for boating, swimming, and just admiring horse farms where we can learn to ride, a historical society that is active, and always adding new, old information and items, farms that keep our farming past alive, and much more. In warmer weather, on the third Sundays of the month, we enjoy breakfast at the Kaliva Club, which is run by the Finnish community. Sitting on Fort Pond is a beautiful building where we are served a delicious breakfast of blueberry pancakes or eggs with bacon or sausage and home fries. Yum. It's a special view of the beauties of our town. Look for the sign and drop by with friends and family for a treat to enjoy. And to learn more about the Knights and Ladies of Kaliva in Littleton, go to kalivalittletonma.org. Hmm. That sounds good. Yeah, hmm. it is. It's a wonderful morning. Uh, they serve a fantastic breakfast, and it's a lot of people coming in. And did you know we had a Finnish community? No, I did not. Well, sort of. Hmm. I did know about the Kaliva Club. Um, where I live in New Ipswich, New Hampshire, is a very large Finnish community. Hmm. Big families, hmm. blonde-haired people <laughs> all around. <laughs> it's, uh, do they do anything like... Kaliva um, here? Yeah, I'm sure they do. I mean, I mean, everywhere you go is Kaliva Club there because it's all finished, you know. You don't have to go to one place. Good for them yeah. for doing this. It is. Yeah, it's great. And uh, don't miss the Park and Recreation Department's third Thursday events starting in May on the 16th. There are many crafts, nonprofit groups, and town departments there for you to check out. And it's becoming a tradition now, and it's it's a great way to spend a spring or summer evening with your family, your friends, and your neighbors. So I want to thank you all for joining us today, this May edition. And don't forget to hug a senior. That's right. <laughs>